My name is Celia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Sunday, the 3rd of April. Usually I record on Mondays, but I just figured right now is the perfect time. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're watching for the first time, I hope that you enjoy it. And if you're coming back every week, then thank you so much. I figured it's been a while since I reintroduced myself and since there are always new people starting to follow and stuff, I figured it makes sense to just give you a quick rundown so you don't have to go back and watch all the other 31 episodes. So like I said, my name is Julia. I am 22, almost 23, and I am living in the south of Germany with my boyfriend. And right now I'm finishing my master's thesis in psychology. So I've been doing psychology for about four and a half years now and I should be finished sometime around summer, which is pretty exciting. We are living in Würzburg, which is a really pretty town, if I may say so myself. Um, it's about an hour from where I grew up and I always wanted to be <laughs> further away, but somehow fate just Kind of forced me to study here and now I do really enjoy it. We are in the process of moving or we are trying to figure out where we are moving and so on. Um, so that's that. Besides that, in my free time I mostly knit. I also spin on my spinning wheel and drop spindles. My wheel is a Poolmaker's Blitz and besides the whole yarny thing. I also really enjoy listening to music, making music. I drink a lot of coffee. I'm very addicted to coffee. I also not like tea. And what else? Yeah, I don't really know what to tell you guys, but maybe you have some sort of insight. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Wipfi, which is W U E P F I. Um. The podcast group on Ravelry is called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group and that's where I post show notes and where you can find the knit alongs and everything. I also um, the Happy Knitting Podcast on Instagram and recently I tried to revive my blog and change the address to happyknittingpodcast.wordpress.com There's not a crazy amount of new stuff on there but that's what I used to do before I started podcasting, so if you want to have a look at my really old projects, you could do that, and if people are deciding to come back to my blog, I might put some more work into that. So I think that's that. Um, today I want to talk about the knit-alongs that are going on, works in progress, spinning, acquisitions, and then a few things that I've been pondering about. I have an ask away, and then I'll talk about life in general. And if you're wondering why I'm looking over there, I placed my show notes in a different place today. I'm trying to have a new setup and I'm not sure if I prefer it or not. Also, I'm trying to follow my notes a bit more because I always write notes and then, then I don't actually read them while I podcast and that means that I miss out on a lot of things anyways. So, first of all, I have a few housekeeping things. Um, a lovely viewer called Lisa contacted me this week and talk, um, she wrote to me that they have a sock yarn swappers group on Ravelry and she thought that I might be interested in that because I'm knitting a mitered square or what's it, what's it called? Something cozy memories blank blanket and she also thought that you guys might be interested so you might want to check out the group on Ravelry because they don't only do lots of mini swaps, but they also do swapless swaps, which means that you pay a certain amount of money and she orders the yarn when she has enough people and turns it into mini skeins and sends them out. So if you're interested in that, you should totally check it out. I honestly haven't had the time and I told her that and I'm really sorry about that to really look into that. And right now I have quite a lot of minis, but yeah, it's good to know. Um, then knit alongs. We have the crazy color cow going at the moment, which is running until the 13th of May, and there have been amazing projects in the finished object and chatter thread. Honestly, you guys are posting so much, I can't keep up. And I just wanted to thank you guys for that because it's really, really motivating, and I love looking through the channels to see all the colorful 
things that you've created and there's a really really great project in there and i can't believe that we still have like five or six weeks to go and there's already that much going on um and i'll show you the prizes in a second so we have three prizes and the first one is a little um Japanese mud bag, I guess, which is from All About Yarn on Etsy. And with this bag, you get her card, which has a little stitch marker. Make sure it's focusing. Oh, I hate this part. There you go. So this is her Etsy store, All About Yarn. And you get this set of mini skeins. It's seven rainbow mini skeins. And I think it's perfect for our little knit along. So that's the first prize. The second prize comes from She Bought Garne, which is a German indie dyer. And as you all like, uh, know, I love to use German indie dyed yarn. Um, and this is a skein of sock yarn in her bot sock space. The colorway is Pink Elephant, which is very, very bright. And with this skein of yarn, you get this coordinating mini skein for heels and toes. So that's prize number two. And prize number three, you can pick out yourself is any skein of yarn from OMG Yarn and Fiber on Etsy. So she said you can pick any base, any colorway, and she will even sew a little surprise for you as well. So that makes three prizes and I'm really, really happy about that. And thank you to everyone who donated one. Um, all the information about the cow is in the thread. The other cow that is going on is an informal one for the Even Star Shawl, which is a circular shawl by Susan Pandorf. And I will show you mine later. There's no prizes, there's no deadline. It's just a place to, um, you know, chatter and share what you've been learning about the pattern while knitting it. So I'll just leave that open. And if you decide to knit an even star later, you might just want to have a look as well. So that's my knit alongs. And I will move right into works in progress because I don't have a finished object this week. I'm really surprised that most of the time I think I won't have anything, but I usually manage to finish something. But this week I haven't even been close to finishing anything. But I still feel like I've made good progress even though I haven't had that much knitting time. So, very quickly, just to show you my sock yarn blanket, which looks like this. And for anyone interested in the back, I'm knitting in the ends as I go, so the only ends that I still have hanging off either are just little things that need to be trimmed or the ends that I will, you know, use when I knit my next squares. So, I'm not sure, I think. Last time I showed this to you, I was halfway through knitting this square by knitting in France. I knit a pair of Christmas socks out of these. And I added this square, which is an opal mini, as well as a rainbow mini skein from All About Yarn. So not crazy amounts of work, but like I said, I've been a bit scatterbrained and pretty busy this week, so I'm pretty happy with that. My next work in progress is a little awkward to show you guys, and that's my Hermione's Easter socks, as I call them. Um, so I'm knitting another pair of Hermione's Everyday socks, and the yarn for me just screams Easter, because if you look at the colors, it's like yellows and pinks and greens and white, and I don't know, it's very spring kind of colors. So the yarn is by Field Fusion on Etsy. I, saw, I told you last week that I lost the tag. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but you can see I've made quite a bit of progress. I was down here last week where the stitch marker is. And now it's not focusing. There we go. And like I said, I'm knitting the Hermione's Everyday Pattern. And I have done something interesting to the back because I find that my socks always kind of hang loose or tend to hang loose right around my ankles or right above the heel is where I get sort of baggy socks and I don't really like that at all. And actually 
most of my recent pairs of socks have been a little bit too big as well, so I'm thinking my gauge must have just loosened up. So these socks, instead of 64 stitches, which I usually do, I'm doing 60 stitches. And I decided to, before I started the heel, knit a few rows of 2x2 two two rib on the back of the foot, uh, of the leg. Because I thought that might just cinch it up a little bit and make it a lot more comfortable to wear. And I'm really, really anxious and excited to see if this actually works because I have no idea if it will. But you can see here, I've only put in one heel, which is the Pishnipska's heel. So I've knit the 2x2 two two ripping and then I think about 5 rows of stockinette. Because I don't want the ribbon to go down too low. And then I've inserted the heel this morning. Um, I really love how the colors are strapping on the heel. I always find that really funny. And I think for me this is a relatively long leg. I'm really excited about these. And these have just been flying off the needles. I don't know, I haven't even knit on them as much. But they're just happening very fast. Um, the needles that I'm using is part of acquisitions. I got a second set of higher, higher sharps because I just love them so much and I really wanted to love my Adis, but I love Haya Haya so much more, I'm sorry. So these are 2.25 millimeters in the 40 inch or 100 centimeter cable, big circulars. So that's my finished, pro uh, my work in progress number one and the reason why I'm not showing it to you better is because I just started the second heel. So the, the stitches are a little bit all over the place. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with this project and I love the yarn base that Shadow of Fat Fusion uses. It's super soft and yeah, I don't know, I really like it. My second work in progress is my featherweight cardigan. This is Holzgarn Coast, which is their um, lamb's wool cotton blend. It's 700 meters per 100 grams and this is the skylight colorway I have three balls of this and the first one is almost gone so the featherweight as you probably all know is a cardigan by Hannah Fettig and it is a top-down raglan construction and it's my first raglan top-down cardigan I've ever knit so I'm going to show it to you So you can see this is the back and the stitch marker, the green one there, oh I'm moving the wrong way. This is where I was last week so I haven't done a crazy amount of knitting on this. But honestly I do love the pattern and I love the yarn in the way that it is, it feels and the fabric it creates but I don't really love knitting on it just because it is rows and rows of stockinette and because of the cotton content in the yarn it kind of hurts my hands like I feel like if I used a nicer or a more woolen blend yarn I would enjoy this project so much more so I think I'll definitely knit it again just with a different yarn and that doesn't mean I don't like the whole scan I think I would really prefer it for a different kind of project so I would love to knit like a lace sort of thing with bigger needles with that yarn. And I originally bought this for the Hitofude, which I still might use this yarn for. I just think with um, stockinette on a tight gauge, it's maybe not perfect for me, but yeah. I think I'm about halfway down the body, so I still have a fair bit to go. And I just need to sit down and work on it. Oh, and I'm knitting it on 3.5 millimeter needles. And these ones are the ones I usually never use, but they're quite good for this kind of project. They're the Knit Pro Naturals, which are the wooden needles that don't have the rainbow colors. And I don't usually like wooden needles, but like I said, this yarn hurts my hands, so the wooden needles are actually really good for that. My next work in progress are my hand spun socks. So you might remember this is the hand spun yarn that I spun from fondant fiber. Excuse my crappy fingernails, please. So it is um, a merino nylon blend that I spun into a three ply or a chain ply. 
and I'm knitting a pair of socks and again I'm surprised at how much progress I made actually but um, I knit this when a friend was over the other day and I just kind of knit on it without realizing how much progress I was making which is always good so you can see the stitch marker is where I was last week so I've knit the leg feel very awkward showing you guys stuff today, I don't know why. And I've put in the Fish Lips Kiss Heels, which is my favorite heel at the moment. I really like that one of the heels is pink and one is gray. And yeah, just in general, I really, really like how this yarn is knitting up. It is very sturdy, it's a lot sturdier than my two-ply sock yarn that I've used before. Um, it's probably a bit of a heavier weight here, and I think it's between a fingering and a sport weight. But I can't wait to have these socks finished, and I love the sort of almost marrowed kind of effect that the yarn gives. And last time I did a pair of handspun socks, I felt like the patterning was very different. But these ones are kind of strapping or whatever in the same way. So I'm really, really happy with these. Again, I'm using higher, higher sharps in the 2.25 millimeter cup, um, size US size 1 I think is it size 1 and I'm using a 40 inch cable and I'm knitting this on 60 stitches because I figured the yarn is a little, little thicker now I'm thinking I may have even gone down to 56 so I thought about including some kind of curl ridge or ribbing on the foot just to make it a little tighter but I'm not sure if I will. So that is my second sock project which is living in my Mila Mix bag which I won and my last work in progress which is also in a bag that I won is from this one is from Diary of a Yarn Snow from Julie um, and this is my even star shawl um, and the first thing I'll show you is the yarn this is um, Das Mondschaf who is a German indie dyer who I can definitely recommend this is her 50% merino 50% silk base which is discontinued unfortunately which is why I got it on 50% off and her logo looks like this um, I really like this yarn. It is a kind of loose two-ply yarn. I really enjoy it. The only thing I don't like is that I think I had like three or four knots in the first skein, which isn't a terrible thing, but it's a little bit annoying, especially if you're working on a lace project and if I have a knot, I will break the yarn and reattach it properly because I'm just too scared that one day the knot will come undone and my whole show will be a mess. And as you can see, I'm on the second cake, finally. So I started out with 200 gram skeins, and one skein is 700 meters. And finally, I ran out of the first skein, which is good, because I just... I feel like I'm pretty... I'm not that close to finishing, but I'm relatively close, and I was still on the first skein. So yeah, I broke into the second one, and it kind of feels like an accomplishment. So the shawl, as I think I already said, is by Susan Pandorf. It is a Lord of the Rings reference with the even star, which is a little star pattern. Let me try if I can show it to you. Oops. Can you see the star? I'm kind of stretching it out wrong. But here is a star in here. Anyways, it is a paid pattern, which I really enjoy. Not the fact that it's paid, but I really enjoy the pattern. I'm knitting it on 3.5 millimeter Knit Pro Nova interchangeables. And I am still using my 150 centimeters um, cord cable, which I think is 60 inch. So it's pretty scrunched up on the needles, but maybe you can get a sense of how huge this shawl is by now. It is very, very big. And you can see I'm in the last chart, which is chart 3. Um, and last week I was down here where the stitch marker is. So 
This might not look like a crazy amount of progress, but honestly, I knit a lot on, on this. Most of this I did last night because I just really need to finish some things and this is one of the projects I just feel like I need to sit down. Because I was kind of knitting it like one row and then I would stop and then I'd pick it up again and when you pause and put it down, it just means that sometimes you don't really get anywhere. So yesterday I just forced myself to work on it for like maybe two hours and it was really really good and it's nice to see some progress. So this is probably my favorite chart that they had in the pattern so far because you have all these twisted stitches which in the beginning I hated because it's a little bit you have to get used to the stitches but now I really really enjoy it I really love how the pattern is kind of lining up and yeah I think it's really really pretty so I think I just have like 30 more rows which doesn't seem like a lot but when a row takes you like half an hour it is a lot um, and then there's the applied border, which has beads, but I'm not going to use any, so I'm hoping that without the beading it'll go quite fast. I also thought about just finishing this chart and then, because I have a few things coming up on the needles, putting it into hibernation and then doing the last step um, separately, but right now I feel like I just want to finish it. So I'll definitely try to get some more work on this done today. Like, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy working on this a lot, but it is at a stage where the rows are very long, and yeah. Last night, like I said, I was working on it like crazy, and then I wanted to finish one row before I had to go. And that last row took me probably twice as long as the other rows, just because I kept losing focus and forgetting what I was doing and having to look and go back, and I realized it's really time for me to stop now. And I'm knitting this from the written instructions, which I really quite like. And I'm actually knitting all of this while watching podcasts or um, watching series. So if you're scared of this project, really, there's no need to be scared. I just, whenever I start a new row, I kind of focus for a little bit or maybe pause whatever I'm doing to figure out the pattern. But after you've done it like one or two times, you just kind of remember the repeat, especially when it all lines up so you see where you're at and what you're doing and then I usually just watch TV while I finish my rows so I watch most podcasts or a series or whatever on my laptop and I will just split the screen so one half of the screen will have the instructions and the other half will have whatever I'm doing and that means that I don't get too bored because otherwise I think those rows will just take too long so yeah, I'm really happy with the project, I'm happy with the yarn, I'm curious to see if you will see a line where I change the skeins, because obviously I did not alternate skeins and they looked a tiny bit different, but then I think it doesn't really matter at all, especially for this kind of project. So yeah, I'm really curious where I'll be with this project next week, but I have a new shawl or a test knit that will probably go on the needles tomorrow or maybe even today. So I will also be focusing on that, so everything else might kind of take a backseat for a while. Um, with that, I think I'm done with works in progress. And I will move on to spinning. So I have one thing to show you this week. And that's the sock yarn that I've been spinning for a while. It was from a merino nylon braid from Elfenwolle who is a German indie dyer in the colorway Ice Palast. And you can find her on Etsy, elfenwolle.etsy.com. And I finished it, I washed it and everything. So this is the skein of yarn. I'll show it to you first and then I'll talk about it. I feel like the camera is blowing it out. It looks very blue on the screen right now, but maybe that's just the way that my screen is showing it. But it is a mix of like yellows and beige and oranges, and then it has these hints of blue and purple coming through. So I think it's super interesting. Um, I spun this into really fine singles and then Navajo or chain plied them because I really wanted um, the colors to stay together rather than create a barber pole kind of yarn. Um, before washing, I got 460 meters, 
per 100 grams and after washing it was only 360 meters which seems to be a bit of a too big of a difference because I heard that usually you lose about 10 percent in the process of washing so I'm not really sure what happened there but I did measure it again and I'm 99% certain it is 360 meters now but I'm fine with that that means it is still a fingering or a thick fingering I guess weight kind of yarn which I really like and my last pair of hand spun socks which had quite a lot more yardage actually ended up being a bit I don't know, the yarn, yarn was just very thin, and I think I might prefer this. So, it's not my most even chain ply, or I think just the singles are a tiny bit too thick and thin for me. I feel like the um, bond and fiber I mentioned to this, uh, I, I just, I don't know, I'm losing my words right now. I managed to spin my last hand spun sock yarn a little bit more even maybe, but maybe I'm just imagining that as well. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, I really enjoyed working with Tina's fiber. I kind of want to get some more, but I have been so bad with buying things. I should really take a break. But yeah, that's that. And the second spinning project I can't show you right now, because I started spinning up fuzzing from bond and fiber. They were, what were they? Falkland, Merino and Silk. I showed them a couple of weeks ago. They were the kind of peachy red. Is that even a word? Kind of reddish with white fuzzlings. And the reason why I can't show them to you right now is simply because I spun it up onto two bobbins of singles. And now I'm two plying it from two bobbins onto a third. And I would have to take everything apart to show you so i hope you guys don't mind i will probably post a photo of ins on instagram later and maybe i'll even insert it here and that should be done pretty soon so i'll just show that to you next week with that i will move on to acquisitions and i just have a tiny bit of acquisitions and that's a little gift that i got from my friend it comes in this cute little bag, which I always, always enjoy. And it's a set of stitch markers. So this is from a new, new to me Etsy store. It's called Rantai Designs. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but I will put it in the show notes. And as you can see, I got four of these little stitch markers that are little flowers yeah i'm really finding it hard to show this to you guys and then i have a progress keeper with a heart which i really can't show anything today are you kidding me well you kind of get the idea so it's a really cute little set um and I thought they were going to be too heavy, but they're actually really, really light. So I really enjoy these and I can't wait to use them because I haven't allowed myself to use them before showing them to you guys. So that's it for acquisitions. I've already mentioned the set of higher highs that I got as well. And I'm pretty happy that I don't have that much to show you in terms of acquisitions because I have been really bad, if I may say so. There's just been a few shop updates that I've been waiting for and then I kind of ordered everything within like two days. So that means I have a lot of happy mail coming towards me next week, I hope. Um, and with that, I think I'll move into Ask Away and then I have some pondering and stuff. So if you're not interesting, interested in that, that's totally fine. So for Ask Away, a lovely viewer of the podcast asked me um, she, that she's, I said that she's interested in drop spindles and what kind of drop spindle did I get and where did I buy it from? So my spindle looks like this. It is a bottom hollow um, spindle and that's a word that I can never pronounce so go make fun of me of that. Um, so you can see it has a hook at the top which I always find very helpful 
because I don't even use a leader yarn when I start spinning on my spindle. I just kind of hook it onto here and spin right from that. Um, and I got this from a German indie dyer store called Regenbogenwolle, which means rainbow wool or rainbow yarn. Um, she used to have a store on Davanda, which is kind of like German Etsy. But she now has, has her own page, which is called regenbogenwolle.de, and it will be linked in the show notes. Um, I actually wanted to check on her and that page just before recording this podcast to give you some more details, but I think the site was down, or at least I was getting some sort of error message, so I couldn't access the page. But I think by the time you watch this, it should probably be back up. So um, she, ha she used to have these sets of um, beginner's spindles in different sizes um, and you would get a braid of yarn uh, of fiber with it as well and i looked up what i have and this is a 46 gram spin spindle so i think it's one of the medium ones i know that beginners is um, that people say that beginners should use heavy spindles but i when i started spinning i really didn't want to get a really heavy one just because i knew that i want to spin thin yarn. So I think the 46 gram one is pretty much a medium size, correct me if I'm wrong. So like I said, I will link it in the show notes. I hope that it will help you and I figured it makes sense to answer this on the podcast because I get quite a few questions about the spindle that I use. Um, in fact, I am, the spindle was used yesterday by my sister who I taught how to spin yarn and that was really fun. Total tangent, of course, has nothing to do with the question, but she was using it yesterday and it was being dropped like crazy. So this spindle has gone through a lot. I feel like it's not 100% straight anymore, but it's a great spindle. I really like it. I have dropped it like a million times. I still drop it when I spin now. You'd think that by now I'd be good at it, but I still manage to drop it all the time. Mostly when I'm winding yarn or I'm just, I'm just a very clumsy person as well. So yeah, I'm really happy with this one and if you're thinking about buying a spindle, I, I can only say that I really like the ones that have a hook on the top just because I think it makes it a little bit easier, but of course it's all a matter of taste. So thank you so much for that question. So this next section will be a bit of pondering and I'm actually feeling quite anxious because I don't really know how to talk about this topic. But essentially, I've been thinking about where I want my podcast to go and what I want this podcast to be like. And I guess we all watch lots of podcasts and every podcast is a little bit different. And then there's also kind of like trends and things that lots of podcasters seem to be doing. And I just kind of, I feel a bit torn on a lot of things. So I'm not, I'm not sure if any of this is going to make sense to you, but I'm just going to try to talk to you about it. So first of all, I feel like lots of podcasts mention other podcasts, which is great. And I, I am torn about it because I totally understand that by mentioning other people, it's just a matter of sharing the joy. And you, you know, if, if I watch someone that I really, really enjoy, I feel like, well, you know, you, you guys might really enjoy this podcast as well. And of course, you like if you like people, you want to share what they do. Same goes for indie dyers, Etsy sellers, and so on, of course. But then at the same time, I feel like sometimes I say us as podcasters, but I don't really consider myself a professional podcaster. But anyways, I feel like sometimes if you always mention podcasters, it kind of leaves other people excluded. So I really don't want there to be this sort of divide between like people who watch podcasts and this sort of podcasting people group. So I don't know, I always feel like if I want to mention people, it might come off a little bit weird. So, so I don't know if you've noticed, but I've kind of stopped mentioning that many podcasts. And yeah, it does kind of hurt me a little bit because sometimes I do just want to share what other people do. But yeah, I really don't want to have this sort of thing happening where it's like people always mention the same people and everyone else is kind of left out because I feel like this community should be about everyone and everyone should participate in it and it shouldn't be sort of 
it shouldn't be like high school where you have you know different groups of people and different sets of rules and all that so yeah i'm not really quite sure where i'm going with this but that's why i haven't really been doing you know huge sex sections of hot love or whatever every week if i find someone that i really enjoy i will definitely mention them same goes for you know podcasts that just kind of come up because i have you know knitting a pattern or i have a project back or whatever but i just kind of want to make a point to not only always talk about the same people because yeah i you know i love all of you guys and i I feel like there shouldn't be a difference in if, you know, if, if just someone who, you know, knits, watches this podcast or if it's another podcaster who has like so many followers. So I'm not sure if that makes sense. The second thing that I wanted to mention really quickly is I feel like, I guess it goes into the same category. I feel like this whole podcasting thing has become a lot about the numbers of subscribers and likes and thumbs ups and thumbs downs and again it's like you know if you know a podcast mentions another podcast that will get them more views and more likes and more you know subscribers and that stuff seems to matter a whole lot and again i understand it and sometimes you know of course i look at the number of people who subscribe and of course i notice when people put thumbs up and all that but at the same time i kind of want to not allow myself to get into this sort of competition or game where people where it's all about that so i'm not saying that anyone does that does that i'm not saying that people show off with subscribers or that's what they do the podcast for I'm not saying that at all i just feel like sometimes it's good to just remember that you know it doesn't really matter if it's like 600 or 800 or a thousand people who are watching because it should be about the knitting and it should be about the joy that we all kind of share by sharing our projects and our yarn and all that so yeah i think this is also i should probably remind myself of that as well but yeah just something i wanted to mention also i feel like sometimes i feel really awkward about my acquisitions because you probably know that i do spend a little bit of money on yarn and we all do, I guess. And personally, when I watch podcasts, I really like acquisition sections just because I like seeing yarn. I like seeing new things. But then sometimes I feel like if I order stuff, I think, oh, what are people going to think? I they think I'm, you know, spoiled for having all this stuff. And then suddenly I feel bad for buying something, which I guess we all kind of do that sometimes. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that I try really hard to not be a show off and that's not why I share things. So for example, when I get something new, sometimes I post a photo on Instagram just because if it's like a really nice indie dyer and I think I honestly think that something is great. I do want to share it with you guys and I feel like that person deserves to be mentioned, but then I don't want it to come off as showing off. So I just hope that you guys get that i hope that you guys don't think the wrong thing and i really try to you know put things in a way that they don't come off as showing off or you know being spoiled or whatever um and then something that i've always talked about i think or that's just really important to me and you guys might be sick of hearing about that but that's the whole topic of being real on podcasts and for me, that's a constant struggle because for me, it's this whole being professional versus being authentic battle that is going on in my head. So of course, I know that I, I want to be professional with this podcast in a certain way. I don't want to be fake, but I want to give you a good quality. I want to, you know, do, do it the best that I can. But then at the same time, you know, I don't always perform 100% level. Sometimes I feel good. Sometimes I don't feel so good. And then some, when I don't feel so good or when I have a crappy day, I feel like sometimes, oh, should I even podcast? Because no one wants to see that sort of negativity. And I don't know. But at the same time, I feel like um, 
if we only share, you know, the positive things, um, it depends on sometimes I feel like, like even with Instagram, sometimes all the beautiful things and beautiful lives that other people seem to lead might make one feel a little bit negative about themselves because, you know, if everyone is constantly surrounded by happiness and beautiful things and beautiful yarn and stuff, I feel like that can be really great and it can also kind of make me feel a little bit down. So that's why I really, really try to be authentic in the way that we are all just people and we all have good days and bad days and sometimes we look good and sometimes we don't look that good and um, yeah, I just want to be honest and um, with sharing stuff about my life, I if I'm sharing something that is maybe a little bit negative, I don't want to, you know, spread negativity. I just want to be honest with you guys. So I hope that that's okay. I hope that that makes sense. Um, yeah, so when I talk about life and stuff, I, I do enjoy doing that just because I... I want to be sharing things with you and I feel like it'll just make things a little bit more real if you kind of over time get a sense of what I do and how I do things and what happens in life. Uh, but at the same time, of course, I hope that I'm not boring you guys to death. So I always kind of balance or try to balance between sharing and oversharing. And Maybe sometimes I ramble a bit too much, but I, in the grand scheme of things, really hope that that's okay. Um, because in the end, I feel like this is really just about this knitting community that we have, and it should. I think podcasts should be about knitting, and they should be about you know the love that we have for this hobby and for yarn and for colors and for patterns and all this great stuff and. So yeah, I feel like it's really hard to think about what is the main aspect of a podcast and what's important or what makes a podcast a nice podcast to watch. And there's so many things. There's some some podcast some podcasts maybe I watch more because I just love what they knit or their choice of colors or yarns or whatever. In other podcasts, I might enjoy more because I really find the people and their personalities really interesting. So yeah, I feel like, no, I'm totally rambling on, but then what I'm trying to say is I'm really trying to think about where I'm going with my podcast and trying not to overthink it, which probably I clearly am, but I hope it makes sense to you and if you have any feedback on that, if you have any opinions, if you if there's anything you'd like to see more of or less of or, you know, constructive crit uh, criticism then please let me know. At the same time, as the uh, Periscoping sisters say, if you don't have anything nice to say, be quiet. So, yeah. I feel really weird talking about this to you guys, but it's something that I've been thinking about and I do want to put out there because I think that some people might be thinking the same thing and yeah. I will just move on. Now I will move into life in general. So if you're You've heard enough of my rambling. That's totally fine. I'll just see you next week. But if you want to stick around, of course, that'd be nice. So life this week has been a bit crazy. I think last week I mentioned that we spent Easter weekend with my family. And then on Monday, my dad came down to fix my car. And then I really wanted to use the week to get back into work because the week before I was stuck at home with a toothache because of my wisdom tooth and so this week I really just wanted to get back to work and suddenly what happened was all the days kept filling up so every day something happened and this person was coming over and this person was coming to visit and these were all positive things but it was really stressing me out just because I was planning to work like a crazy person so in reality what happened was I got up very early every day and worked very hard, which I like to do anyways, but then the rest of the days were filled with running around and doing social things, which I really enjoyed, but it was just very much. So on Tuesday my sister who was here for the week, we went out for dinner with her and her friends 
and going out to dinner with three 14 year old, years olds was really really fun it was it made me feel quite old but it was very fun as well and then i had a thesis meeting was which was very important and very good even though again i'm swamped with work i feel like he's really pushing me a little bit but that's a good thing then my mom came over from my hometown and we did a three-quarter day i should say of shopping and going out for a nice vietnamese lunch and drinking lots of coffee and again that was really nice and it was really nice to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with my mom which doesn't happen very often but then the next day my sister came over so she had said that before that's like oh we're gonna see you on friday and i said yeah of course and i just didn't take it very seriously until i realized that she's actually coming and so are you seriously visiting and she said yeah we said we you would blah 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 and i did i did agree to it at some point and just completely forgot about it so she came as well which was nice and again it wasn't really perfect timing but i couldn't say no so she came over and again we had lots of fun and we went a little bit of shopping and then my other sister who was here for the week she took part in a it's called young philharmonics orchestra which meant that it was like sort of like a project orchestra and they had been having crazy amounts of practice every week every day and then she had her finishing concert which we went to and that was really really nice um i do enjoy music just because i've been brought up with lots of music my mom's a musician i used to play anything from piano recorder um viol violin viola i even played the drums for a little bit i used to sing i played the guitar so yeah i do have a bit of a music background so that was really really nice and then i'm trying to think yesterday i was just so happy to do no to do nothing so even though i feel like i should be working so much yesterday i just decided to take the day off because it was a saturday and just kind of hang out and knit and catch up with a friend and it felt really really great because like i said it's been crazy and like last night just sitting on the couch working my evening star for like two hours straight was really really fantastic and I, my plan for the next week is to also take a little bit of time for myself too because i just i don't like it when i feel like i'm burning out a little even if it's on good stuff so i'm still planning to get up early every day and work my ass off in the morning like doing research and you know writing down uh, like figuring out my hypothesis and all that sort of research stuff but then i am really trying to make time so that in the afternoons when i'm finished with however much i have to do i can just spend time knitting and relaxing and doing things that i really enjoy and doing lots of quiet time i guess so i'm hoping that'll work out it's always dangerous because i'm like oh yeah i have so much time this week and then just things seem to kind of fall into the week and suddenly you have something going on every day but yeah i'm really trying to i really want to just enjoy knitting a little bit more next week and I'm also realizing that a lot of time with my work or my thesis work, I guess, um, part of it is, you know, actively sitting down and working on it and reading things and writing things. And then it's also a lot of times when I work in the morning and then I take a little time off, suddenly I have these bursts of ideas and things are like, oh yeah, I should do it this way. I should organize my thoughts in such and such way. And I feel like if I just give myself a little more time, that'll probably help that process so yeah that was a lot of talk about me um i'm trying to think if there's anything important that i have left out as usual i have not looked at my show notes again oh my notes um but i don't think i've left anything out so i really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode i I'm really trying to have more of an order of having the knitting in the beginning so that if you're not interested in the rest, 
you don't have to listen to it and that's fine so i know that you all don't have unlimited time as well and yeah i mean not everyone might be interested in my rambling anyways um thank you so much for watching please feel free to give you you to give me honest um comments and criticism and whatever thoughts you have um i would love to hear from you thanks again for being super active in the Ravelry group i've really enjoyed that and i hope that you guys will continue to be so active because it brings me a lot of happiness and now i will just knit and enjoy the afternoon which i'm really excited about i hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend i hope everything is going well and yeah i'm sending you all the best wishes and lots of love happy knitting everyone bye